I feel discouraged and why should the shadows come why should my heart be lonely and long for my heaven and home when Jesus is my portion a constant friend is he For his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches, he watches me. Oh, 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 why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows why should they come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for my heaven and home when Jesus is my portion a constant friend a constant friend is he for his eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches, he watches me. Oh, I sing because I'm happy. sing because I'm free for his eye is on the space No, he watches, he watches me. Ah! Uh... 
sing because because I'm free on the sparrow and I know he watches he watches me Thank you, Damon. Amen. Amen. It's preaching time. If you would turn to the book of Galatians, the fifth chapter. Galatians 5. Say amen when you have found it. Galatians 5 from the ERV says, My brothers and sisters, I don't teach that a man must be circumcised. If I do teach circumcision, then why am I still being persecuted? If I still taught circumcision, then my message about the cross would not be a problem. I wish those people who are bothering you would add castration to their circumcision. Here it is right here, though. My brothers and sisters, God chose you to be free. But don't use your freedom as an excuse to do what pleases your sinful selves. Instead, serve each other 
with love. The whole law is made complete in this one command. Love your neighbor the same as you love yourself. If you continue hurting each other and tearing each other apart, be careful or you will completely destroy each other. I want to talk from the simple subject of love. Love. Father God, I pray now you look to well, leave me there until I'm done. You understand I'm to do this assignment way more than I do. Allow me to preach your word and not mine. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Love. Four letters. But awful difficult. You know Christ as Savior. And the one thing you should understand is he loved us first. He loved us more than we love ourselves. But the reason why we don't do what we're supposed to do is because we lack the love that he has given us. Some people are unable to love themselves. So how in the world can they love someone else? If you can't love yourself, then you are already in position of failure. Because people fight with themselves. They believe they're unworthy of God's love, of God's unmerited favor, his grace. Because maybe they've done this or they've done that, and so they kind of preclude themselves. But Jesus died for everybody. I don't care your color, your character, who you think you are or who you think you're not. God foresaw all of our mess before he got on the cross. He understood us. We have a problem understanding us. The Jews and the Gentiles had problems and and kind of going back and forth with one another. But you need to do this or you need to do that. And everybody was legal. But there's nothing legal about Christianity. It's not about the law. It's about the grace. It's about the love. Now, because you love someone does not mean you become complicit with what they do and what they say. You love your children, but you discipline them. That's love. Now, for those folks who like, they don't discipline. They say, well, he'll grow out of it, or he'll fix it, or he'll do that. But no, the Bible says to train them up. Remember what I said, that this is not a democracy. This is a theocracy. My children had to understand when they was coming up, it was not a democracy. There was not a vote on what you got to say or what you got to do. It was a dadocracy. <laughs> a momocracy. And even if mom got out of line, it was still a dadocracy. Why? Because I'm following God. If I'm following God, Everybody else needs to get out the way. But you don't know that I'm following God unless you yourselves are in the word. And if you're in the word, you can understand the difference between love and like, between law and grace. And so if we're ever going to be what God has called us to be, we got to move from legalistic or religion to grace, to love, to mercy. But love chastens. That's where we have a problem. <laughs> People always say, well, if you love somebody, then you let them do whatever they want to do. That's not love, that's like. Jesus loved us. Because he paid an ultimate price for you and I to be one day on our way to glory. 
He didn't have to do that. Not the Savior. Not God in the flesh. Not the one who controls all things. Had a, had a legion of angels ready to assist at any given moment. Somebody who had power and authority to be beat, to be battered, to be bruised, and everything imaginable under his own son. And yet, the Bible declares he never said a mumbling word. He did what he had to do, even though it would cause him his life. How many of you are willing to lay down your life for your friend, for your family, or worse yet, for an enemy? Who's willing to die to show the love that God showed us. Now, just because we show love once again, that does not mean we're complicit. Love is patient, kind, long-suffering, but it also chastens. It also points to your sin. Whatever it is, we all have fallen short of the glory of God. So none of us are above reproach. But at the same time, we got to be able to call a spade a spade. I, I know my faults. I know where they are. I don't sugarcoat my faults, but I also understand that I'm flesh. I'm wretched. I'm this old wicked man. Ain't no dwell of no good thing in me. I understand that. But I still got to love. And so I can't go and picking and choosing which sins I want to pick and choose. And say, so, well, you know, I, I, don't, I don't do that, Reverend. Well, just that saying alone is a sin. Because you think you're better than someone else. Look, 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 I, what, what I'm trying to tell you, I don't care what your station in life is. Whether you are straight, whether you are gay, whether you are totally confused. Christ died for you. My job is to simply love you. But my job while loving you is to tell you the truth of your sin. Because if I don't, then I don't love you. Because love is willing to sacrifice even if my loving you causes you to hate me back. People say, well, if you talk about the homosexuals, then you're homophobic. But what am I when I talk about the fornicators? Am I fornophobic? <laughs> I, 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 I see it all the time. Some people will side up one side and they'll put everybody on this side and the other folks on that side and say, well, God loves those, but God don't love them. Well, the Bible declares that he died for all of humanity everybody is in need of a savior and so because I don't understand your sin it does not mean that God doesn't love you nor should I stack it up against you so that now there's so much hate you can't see love how do you expect to to get to somebody if you can't shine a light on their darkness. If you're unwilling, because if you're unwilling, then you are not doing the mandate of God by making disciples of all nations because you picking and choosing. Well, I don't want to fool with them, so I'm going to talk to these folks over here. But it's those over there that you don't want to fool with who need them more than those who you want to talk to, but you feel more comfortable with them. Love has nothing to do with comfort. Love your neighbor as you love Yourself. Stop talking about you circumcising, you uncircumcised. Stop talking about whether you speak in tongues or they don't speak in tongues. Or stop talking about whether you Catholic and you... Pro no! Is love central to your assignment? Because you got to understand that if we want to talk love, then we got to understand first and foremost who Jesus is in our lives. That's the because he said, look, Love your neighbor as you love yourself. So obviously, if I'm spitting hate towards you, I 
then obviously I don't know who I am and I don't love myself. See, when I can walk somewhere, I can walk in the security and the strength of knowing who Jesus is in my life. So therefore, wherever I go, you don't threaten me. I'm not scared. I don't have to spit venom with venom because I know who God is. And so I can sit down and talk with anybody, but I'm just trying to tell you that if I can do that, there has to be some comfortability with me and the God that I serve, which means I need to spend time pouring into his word so that I know who he is, so that I know that I know that I know. Make no mistake about it. I can speak to you. I don't care whether you're blind, crippled, and crazy, whether you're, 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 your alphabets. I don't care what your alphabet initial assignment is because I serve alpha and omega, beginning and the end, first and the last. Everything in between is us. So we got to love one another. And we got to die. Isn't that right? It's, our, it's that old self that keep getting us in trouble. If you continue hurting each other and turn each other apart, be careful or you will completely destroy each other. This is why churches can't connect. We're still trying to be a democracy in God's house. Well, you don't do it this way or you don't do it that way. Man, look, is Jesus the center of your faith? Then let's focus on that. Don't worry about how I do this or how I do that. Is Jesus centered? So if he's centered, then we have a common denominator that can bind us together to make sure that we can produce the light versus the darkness. But if each church is fighting amongst one another and even with inside the house of God, we in fighting. Somebody said something. Somebody did this. Did I just tell you that you got to know who you are? Because if you know who you are, it don't matter what somebody just said to you, especially if it's not true. Why do you keep losing your mind over something that is insignificant and non-true when you know who you are? It's like somebody saying, well, you white, but I know I'm black. And I'm going to say, no, man, I, I, I know I, no, I don't have to argue with you. I know who I am. I've been in my skin for 57 years. I, I know how America treats me. I know who I am. So, as a believer, do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? Because somebody should not have to tell you who you are. You already know. And when they speak, look, 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 look at Jesus in the wilderness. Jesus knew who he was. So when Satan kept trying to speak stuff to him, Jesus just counter. Well, look, man should not eat by bread alone. Come on now. Everything that Satan threw, Jesus counteracted. Why? Because he knew who he was. He knows who he is. We get shook. I don't know. My, well, what do you think about, I heard somebody say, but you know, when he was talking about, I told you, I was in a conference and they was talking about, well, you know, the whole abortion issue. And this is coming from a Christian perspective. And he said, oh, well, you know, what happens if the, the mother's life is in danger? And I said, well, what if? He said, well, what you going to do? I said, well, first of all, that's above my pay grade. But secondly, you just told me that God is in control. So if God is in control, why am I worried about it? Yeah, but what if you, what, there is no what if. You got to remove what if. Why? Because God is. He says, who shall I say sent me? You tell him, I am. So if you are a child of God and your life is in the balance, who put your life in the balance? I am. So if anything, I'm going to defer to him. Why? Because I know he's sovereign and I'm not. I will always get into my feelings. I will always get into my emotions. And I will say, well, I want to protect my life. But the Bible declares the man laid down his life. 
Huh? But I don't understand. You don't have to. Your mind can't, can, it can't handle it. If I could use the phrase from the movie, you can't handle the truth. You want to lie. You want to feel good. But that's not love. That's like, well, why in the world would I be put in this position? I don't know. I don't have an answer for all of your questions. Why? I'm not God. People look to answers. They look to people for answers. But why this situation? Why? Why somebody got cancer? Why somebody get a stroke? Why somebody get, you know, I'm like, I don't know. I can speculate and I can say, well, maybe you ain't living right. Remember, that, that's the whole thing about uh, 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 Hurricane Katrina. Well, you know, they're down there doing all that voodoo right down there. And God don't like that. Did God tell you they was doing voodoo so that he didn't like it? So he sent the hurricane. To, did, I mean, did he have a conversation with you? No. So then you speculate. Well, we can't speculate God's word. It either is or it ain't. It's black and white. Either you believe it or you don't. You can't go through picking and choosing which part of the Bible you want to listen to because they meet you at your needs. But we do it. We pick it like, like they take love. They say, well, love wins. How does love win when you go against God's word? Yeah, but you don't understand. No, I understand perfectly well. You want to do what you want to do. Why? Because you are, your, your main desire is to feed your flesh. You want to give your flesh whatever it wants, even if it goes against what you believe. So if you give your flesh what it wants because it goes against what you believe, then obviously you don't believe. Which means you have no faith. And if you have no faith, you have no hope. If you have no hope, that's why you keep living in sin. Everybody want to use the excuse, well, for all have fallen short. Yes, 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 we know that. Get past that. That is not your excuse. Am I right? But don't use your freedom as an excuse to do what pleases your sinful selves. So therefore, your love for your own self is a lie. Because you're not willing to die to yourself like Christ died for us. We're Christians. We're Christian-like. We follow him. We don't follow religion. Religion is a set of man-made rules designed for you to reach up to God. But Christianity is the only thing that reaches down to us. Everything else is trying to reach God. How can you reach God on a level that you can't even attend to? I don't care how many steps you clap, you, you, I don't care how many, how many rungs on a ladder you step on, I don't care how much time you give, I don't care how much time you give, there is nothing that you can physically do that will reach a holy God. Not if he's holy, not if he's righteous, because even in our best, we still a mess. When you think you're in your best moment, Sin will walk across your doorsteps. Recognize the unrecognized. See, we, we recognize some, but we don't recognize the other stuff that's nice, but not necessary. But love conquers all. The greatest commandment is to love. So it doesn't matter who we share the gospel with as long as we share the gospel. We can't pick and choose because we know that God died for us. He loved us in spite. How do you think that some people go from being fornicators to being celibate? From being homosexual to being straight? From being a liar to telling the truth? From being a thief to being a saint? How do you think people go from one side to the next? It's because there are individuals 
who give their life to Christ and they die to self. Now, just because they died to self doesn't mean your flesh is through with you. And so if your flesh is not through, and it's by design, y'all, because the minute your flesh walked away from you, you'd be no earthly good. The minute you thought you was there, you was high, you was truly high and mighty. Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. Everything I do is a wonderful thing. God knows God. He blesses. And all of a sudden, you get beside yourself because now you got no more problems. All your bills paid, your husband acting right, your wife acting right, your children acting right, the church is perfect. Everything is in order until you get a Job moment. Job was blessed. Then here comes Satan walking around amongst God's counsel. And who offers up Job? I don't think it was Satan. Satan, Satan, Satan you, know, you know, God, I've been looking at one of your people. Maybe I, maybe I read it wrong. But when I read it, it said, have you considered? Uh, wait a minute, wait, 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 God, don't, don't be giving me up. I believe it was Jesus and the, and the disciples, right? And they asked the conversation, you know, Jesus said, well, who do you think I am? He said, you, Peter, but, you know, the spirit of God, flesh, flesh and blood has not revealed it, but the spirit of God. You know, so Peter, you know, Peter was gun ho but Peter always had his foot in his mouth, right? So Peter said, I'll die for you. He said, man, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times, right? In that whole process, though, Peter had, God had already, Jesus already told Peter, Satan has a desire to sift you like wheat. Well, Lord... If you love me, why would you let Satan sift me? Yeah. Yeah. See, y'all being sifted and you blaming the wrong person. You being sifted because God wants you to get somewhere. Because right now, without being sifted, you have no power. Because you ain't been through nothing. You ain't seen nothing. You haven't seen how God can operate and how he can move. So Jesus didn't interrupt. He didn't interfere. He said, but I tell you what, Peter, when you come through your situation, when you come through your problems, when you come through your trials, when you've been there and got the T-shirt, say, been there, done that, then I need you to strengthen your brothers. Why? Because you got a testimony. You got a story. See, at, at one moment you sit there and say, well, Lord, I ain't going to never leave you nor forsaken. I'm going to be there with you till the end. And next thing I know, the clock, the rooster crow. How many times the rooster done crowed on us? For us to be reminded that we ain't doing what we're supposed to be doing. And all of a sudden, it reminds us of our, wait a minute, what, what am I doing if I'm not doing it for him? See, I don't know about y'all, but I'm on my way to glory. So if I'm on my way to glory, I got to take my eyes off of my flesh. Now, it's not easy because there are times when I take my eyes off the prize. Once again, I can go back to Peter. Peter was walking on the water, right? Jesus commanded him to come. He was out there. He walking on water in the midst of a storm. All of a sudden, he began to fail and fall. Why? He took his eyes off Jesus. How many times have we been walking with him only to take our eyes off of him and begin to fall and then we lose faith? But Jesus reached down and picked them back up. And he reaches down and picks us back up. So our, our job is to do what? Shine the love. Shine the light. Don't be complicit with folks. Tell the true story. He first loved me. If I understand that Jesus loves me, then I have to love myself. If I love myself, I'm going to give myself the best. And then he tells me to love my neighbor as I love myself myself. Because I know you are invested in loving you, 
So that same desire you had to fulfill you, I need you to fulfill others, strangers, and even non-strangers. I don't need you to isolate folk because they don't look like you. They don't agree with you. They don't walk the same path as you. No, I expect you now to help them find the light that I chose you to find. He chose us. Y'all realize that, right? You ain't special. It wasn't your hindsight that found Jesus. He chose us. Predestined. Handpicked. And you can't even say, well, I, I, he chose me because he knew I would. Stop lying. Because once again, you're not God. How are you going to tell God why he did what he did? But he chose us, a peculiar people. He chose us. He died for us. And he allowed us to be able to see that we needed him to be alive in this world. Without him, you are born DOA, dead on arrival. If you leave here before knowing him, you will still be DOA, dead on arrival. But when I got here, I was DOA. But when I met Jesus, I'm going to be AOD. What's that? Alive on departure. You got to understand that love means everything to me. And I don't want to leave nobody behind. So I'll talk to anybody, everybody, anywhere. And people say, yeah, but you know, they don't live a righteous life. Well, neither did I one time. And even though I live a somewhat righteous life, I'm still not righteous except for by God's eyes only because when he sees me, he sees that crimson stain. That's the only thing that makes me righteous. That's the fellowship of forgiveness. So our job as believers is to reach out to everyone. No matter their walk, no matter their station, no matter their politics, our job is to spread this good news. We're not creating a new story. It's the same story just being told over and over again. Ain't nothing new under the sun. Won't be nothing new under the sun. God has given us everything we need to be successful. We just have to first love him in order to love ourselves so that we can love our neighbors. That's when love wins. Anything outside of that, that's this world's mess. So when you're dealing with a homosexual, it's the same as dealing with a fornicator. It's the same as dealing with an adulterer. It's the same as dealing with someone who's gluttonous. It's the same as dealing with someone who's a liar, cheater, and a stealer. And people say, well, wait a minute now, now because those sins are different. I ain't know that hell had degrees and heaven had degrees. If I'm in the inner parts of heaven or the outer parts of heaven, if I'm in heaven, it's better than hell. Amen. So I'm not trying to figure out. I know I have some assignments. I have some crowns that I can earn while I'm here. So love propels and pushes me. So I got to push my own sins down and I got to speak to everybody truth without running them away. But love has a tendency, watch this, to run folk away because people ain't used to truth. They want you to lie to them and so, therefore, church has changed, so we become more complacent wow. with other folks. And now the church looks like the world. Wow. So now you got people co-mingling this thing, wow. and people get confused. Well, is he for God or is he not for God? But the Bible says you can tell them by their fruit. My point is simply this. You can keep living in you. Or you can let your mess go and start living in God. If you do that, you'll tell the truth. If you tell the truth, you'll run folks away. But when they want to hear it, they're going to come back to you. And if you stay consistent, 
you'll be there for when they need when when they need you. And that's the biggest part of love. I can't be afraid of you walking away. I tell you the truth cuz I know you'll come back. Jesus said, "Look, I died for them. They left me. But in the end, they come back. Train up a child in the way they should go so when they grow old, they come back. So we can't worry about the present or what's happening right now. We have to worry about the outcome, the end. So if I stay true and I tell you what you're doing is wrong, it's not because I don't like you. It's because I love you. Now, once you get over your own illness and madness because I told you something that goes against what your flesh wants, you got to deal with that. But when you keep going into this world, it's going to push you back to where you heard the truth and say, well, look, why you say what you said? I'm glad you finally came back because love is like a boomerang, y'all. You throw it out, it's going to come back. And that's what we want. Stay consistent. Stay true. And then let God do what he do. Have you ever wondered why in the world the boomerang comes back? No, because it's above my pay grade. <laughs> I just know from pra past practices, this little thing with this hook, if you throw it out, it for some reason comes back. Now, the other man, he'll try to figure out, well, why does that thing come back so much? I'm like, bro, who cares? As long as it comes back. Love is the key. Not fake love, not like but love. Love tells a story. Love tells the truth. Love died on the cross, but on the third day morning, just like a boomerang, <laughs> he came back. He came back and he got up with all power in his hands. Took care of some business while he was down here and as soon as he finished, he got through, thrown back into the vortex. And so right now, he's taking a turn. Because <laughs> the Bible declares me that he's coming back. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then those who are alive shall be caught up to meet him in the air. If you really love somebody... Love yourself first so you can love others as you love yourself and as you know that God has loved you. The doors of the church are open this morning.